This video is for April 28th, 2020. This is um, activity two for shared reading for the book Farming Then and Now. I am going to walk you through the activity in this instructional video. You also, of course, have the option of logging on to your um, Google Classroom, finding activity two shared, and going through the activity on your own. Um, but I will go through and walk you through every step um, during this video. So let me tell you first about some of the materials that you're going to need to be successful with this lesson. So today you can see here it says tell some things farmers do on a farm. So that's what we're going to do for our, our during our lesson today and also we are going to um, focus in on like main idea and uh, key details. So um, if you're doing the activity with me through the video you're going to need a piece of paper preferably a blank piece of paper, but if you don't have blank paper, lined paper, construction paper, whatever you have is fine. So you need a piece of paper and you will need something to write with. Okay, So those are the materials that you will need. So if you'd like to take a minute and pause the video to go get those, uh, go right ahead and do so. Have your materials and you are ready to go. So let's go through the lesson activity two shared for April 28th, 2020. So as you can see, we're going to be talking about some things that farmers do on a farm. Um, if you need translated directions, they are here. Okay. Um, then there's some directions written out, but these are the same things that we're going to do through the slides. Okay. So first of all, we're gonna, going to watch a couple of videos. So the first video is about life on a farm. Jumped the farmers and set off on their way. Up jump the children, ready for the day. Off they go together, and this is what they say. One, two, three, it's a farmer's life for me. It's time for the milking, the cow's named Annabelle. Careful, she'll kick you and spill the milk as well. How many buckets are there, can you tell? One, two, three, it's a farmer's life for me. We go up to the hen house, running all the way. How many warm eggs will we find today? Pick them up carefully and put them in the tray. One, two, three, it's a farmer's life for me. Out in the orchard, there blows a summer breeze. Fat red cherries are ripening on the trees. Would you like to eat some? Yes, please. One, two, three, it's a farmer's life for me. We're down at the pigsty, peeping through the door. At one mother pig and a family of four. Can you see the piglets drinking more and more? One, two, three, it's a farmer's life for me. Over in the meadow, the farmer mows the hay. Soon it will be dry on this lovely sunny day. Rig it and turn it, the baler's on its way. One, two, three, it's a farmer's life for me. Up on the hillside, we're counting lambs and sheep. Some lambs are lost, though we can hear them bleat. Rattle the bucket and give them all a treat. One, two, three, it's a farmer's life for me. Down in the paddock, we check the water trough. The horses are thirsty. Have they got enough? Turn on the hose pipe. Turn it off. One, two, three. It's a farmer's life for me. Back in the farmhouse, it's time to make a cake. Let's get ready so we can start to bake. Leave it to cool and slice it into eight. One, two, three, it's a farmer's life for me. Yes, it is. It's time to feed all the ponies, shut the paddock gate, close up the hen house before it gets too late. The pigs are in the pigsty, the mower's in the shed. The work's done for the day, and now it's time for bed. The work's done for the day, and now... It's time for bed. Good. So 
That video showed a little bit of life on the farm and what farmers have to do from sunup to sundown. Now we're going to watch a video on the main idea. So let's go to that. So that was a video to, or a song rather, to help you understand main idea, which we've talked about a lot this year and we're going to talk about further um, today. So yesterday when you read the story farming then and now, I brought up the PDF, which is just a copy of the text that you can go through. I'm not sure why. Nothing's showing up right now, but um, my internet's been a little wacky today. But um, I read the story out loud to you using the PDF so that you could just see see the story. Um, today, I'm going to share a read aloud of a teacher reading the story to you, just so you can hear the text presented in a different way. Um, and also, I don't want you to get bored with seeing the same text every day and hearing me read it every day. So here's another teacher that's going to go through farming then and now um, to refresh your memory. Um, Today, as you read, I want you to think about what we are supposed to be doing. So if I go back to the first slide here, it says, tell some things farmers do on a farm, okay? So if that were going to be like our, um, our main idea, so if you have your blank piece of paper that I told you to get in the beginning, okay, here's our blank piece of paper. So let's say that our main um, idea is what farmers do on a farm. So the whole text, if you remember from yesterday, you know, it says that farmers get up in the morning and they work from sun up till sundown, right? There's so many chores to be done on the farm. And the whole book goes through these chores, but it shows how these chores are different from the way they used to be done, right? So there's a lot more machinery that can help out farmers on the farm these days than there used to be. But these are all chores that goes through the book. These are all chores that need to be done on a daily basis on the farm. Okay, so our main idea is going to be that farmers have to do a lot of chores on the farm. Okay, so I'm going to write that as my main idea sentence. 
I'm writing in blue, so you can be writing too. So if you remember from one of the videos we did previously on main idea um, a couple weeks back, we're going to start by, I'm going to draw like an oval shape here in the middle. Okay, so there's my oval shape, and inside of this, I'm going to write the main idea. And remember, we've talked about top, the main topic and the main idea are different, right? So the main topic is... You know, what keeps repeating? What do you keep hearing about? We keep hearing farm, farming, farmers, right? So this is about the farm. But our main idea is that there are a lot of chores that need to be done on the farm, okay? So there are many chores that farmers do on the farm, period, okay? There is my main idea. There are many chores that farmers do on the farm. Now, what I'm going to do is, as we go through the book, I am going to pause, and I'm going to come back to this, and I'm going to write my details, right, my key details. Now, anything that I write out here has to be about a chore that gets done on the farm by these farmers because that's what we're doing that's what our main idea is that there are chores that farmers do on the farm okay so we need to talk about well, what those chores are so let's go back to this read aloud here remember we're listening for chores that farmers do on the farm as she reads today All right, boys and girls, today we're going to read Farming Then and Now. It was written by Charles R. Smith, Jr., and this book tells us all about what farming was like a hundred years ago and what it's like now. At the end of the story, I'm going to ask you if you would rather be a farmer now or back then, okay? So let's listen to Farming Then and Now. Here's our title page. Our title page tells us this, the title, shows us a picture from the story, and tells us who the author and the illustrator are. This is the table of contents. Now, boys and girls, this is a nonfiction story. The table of contents tells us what each section in the story is about. A nonfiction book is a book that we don't necessarily have to read from the beginning, middle, end. We can skip to the different sections. The sections in this book are time to wake up, time to milk the cows, time to feed the animals, time to harvest, time to shear the sheep, then or now, and there's a glossary in this book. I love glossaries. The first is the cow. Well, let's see, okay? It says time to wake up. A day on the farm starts when the sun rises. There are lots of chores to be done on the farm. The first chore of the day is to milk the cows. The first, oh, did you know that most of the time farmers get up at daybreak and work until the sun goes down? That can be 12 hours. That is a long day, isn't it, boys and girls? Yeah. Things on the farm weren't always like they are now. I'll show you. Let's take Great Grampy's secret pocket watch and travel back through time. Let's go! And this word says, poof. Do you think this is fiction or nonfiction? Fiction. Yeah, that's kind of silly made up, isn't it? Yep. 100 years ago, most milking was done by hand, one cow at a time. This clock right here says then. Did you know a cow makes about 44 now. pints of milk a that day? That one's now. Yeah, this one says now. Good observation. Today, we use machines to milk cows. This makes it much faster. Milking a cow is a lot easier now. Boys and girls, do you remember um, the other day we watched a video about how these milk mm -hmm. machines work? It's pretty yeah. neat, right? They go yeah. round and round and mm -hmm. round. It's much easier now, don't you think? <coughs> okay, so let's pause the video for a minute. So what is something that she read in the story that uh, farmers need to do. What is a chore on the farm that the farmers need to do? Something that needs to be done. Milking the cows, right? So it's different now than it was then. 
then people had to hand milk the cows and that's how, how it got done. Now there is machinery to help with that, but the farmers still need to be present and I'm sure there's still work that they need to do. So it makes it a little easier for them, but they still have to, to be there to, to oversee and to, to take care of everything. So I have to make sure that whatever I'm writing goes back to saying, it goes back to the fact that there are chores that farmers do. So one chore is milking the cows. Okay, so I'm going to write it before I put my circle just so I make sure I have enough space. Okay, so excuse me, I'm going to come up here. So one chore is to milk the cows, period. this and I'm going to put a line okay this is my main idea and this is a supporting detail this tells that farmers need to do chores on the farm and this gives me an example of a chore that they need to do let's go back to the video the next section is time to feed the animals 100 years ago animals ate cut up turnips potatoes beets, and other root vegetables in the winter after the hay was gone. Did you know alfalfa is one of the most nutritious crops that animals eat? It also is the oldest known plant used for animals to eat. Oh. This says now. Today, animals such as cows and sheep eat silage in the winter. This is a type of food made from grass crops, like corn. To make silage, you need to harvest the crops. Let's see how this has changed over time. I like that the boy and the girl in this story help us with what's happening next. They give us a clue, don't they, boys and girls? Yeah. Yeah, she's like the narrator. Time to harvest. 100 years ago, it took 24 workers using a sith and a sickle a whole day to cut five acres of barley or wheat. Boys and girls in the back, eyes up here. Thank you. That's bigger than three football fields put together. This is a sit and this is a sickle. And this guy's saying that's a lot of work back then. Now, this is a picture of a combine, a combine boys and girls. Today, a combine harvester that's, can cut 20 acres of wheat in one hour. That says then, that says now. Did you know in the past, people often celebrated the end of harvest with music, parades, and a large feast? So if you look here at this picture, first of all, um, this is called a scythe, or it is a long eye, um, according to the internet, and this is a sickle. So, um... The farmers actually had to go out in the fields and to cut down the crops with these things, right? Now they have a combine that cuts it down, but they have to drive it, right? They have to guide it as to where it's going. So this could be another chore that farmers do as they, they harvest or they collect the crops, right? So let's add that. So that's going to be another detail. Um, so there are many chores that farmers have to do. This was one chore. So we could say another chore is... to harvest the crops. So they're harvesting or collecting the crops or the things that grew in the fields. Okay. This and another arrow. Now, as we continue through the book, I'm gonna leave the other two to, for you to do. So as you're listening to her read, if you hear something, that she, um, a, a chore that she says the farmers do, I want you to pause the video and I want you to write them down. Because your task for today, whether you do it on this paper and upload this photo to the Google Classroom, or if you type it into the Google Slides at the end, is you need to have two sentences about chores that farmers do. And I do not wanna see one of these as your answers because we did this together, right? This was our I do and we do, okay? Um, I know we can't really, we do do it together right now, but um, we're doing as best as we can. So the last two, and I'll even draw, like I said, I would write first before you draw your circles just to make sure you have enough space, okay? But 
you are going to do two more chores. Tell me about two more chores that farmers have on the farm. And again, when I look at your answers, uh, whether you type them into the Google slide or you know you write them here, they should not be these two answers. If you're drawing this with me and you wrote these at the top already, fine, leave it there. But these two answers should be different, right? Because these are going to be your own thoughts. So I'm going to go through and let her read the rest of the, the story. And like I said, pause it as you need to so that you can write in um, your thoughts about chores that the farmers do on the farm. Remember, we talked about how they must feel thankful that the harvest is over because back then it was so much work, wasn't it? Time to shear the sheep. In the spring, we shear the sheep to keep them cool. 100 years ago, it took two people to shear a sheep. One would spin the wheel to drive the clippers, and the other one would shear the sheep. What do you think this says? Ben. ben. That's right. And look at this picture. Today, one person, listen, today one person can shear a sheep using electric clippers like the ones you use for a haircut. What does this say? Then This one says now. Did you know the world record for one person shearing a sheep is 866 sheep in nine hours? Wow, that's around 96 sheep per hour. Wow, that's one and a half sheep per minute. Then or now, life in a farm was hard before there were machines. I'm glad I live on a farm now. Not me. I would have. I think it would have been fun. There were more people working on the farm back then to talk to. Some things on the farm never change, such as getting up at daybreak and working until the sun goes down. Look, boys and girls, this is a combine, and it has headlights on it because it's working at night. That's pretty cool, huh? Here's the glossary I was telling you about. This word, these bold words right here are the fancy words in this story. This says alfalfa, crops, nutritious, sit, shear, sickle, and silage, boys and girls. And it tells us what those words mean. We'll go back and look at this again later. Now I want you to raise your hand, boys and girls. Thumbs up if you think you would rather be a farmer back then think so? Now, okay, hands down. Thumbs up if you want to be a farmer now. I think that's the kind of farmer I would rather be too. I would be back then. Would you be back then? Why? I guess, I guess I would think. <laughs> okay. Back to um, her reading and have her read, um, reread one page to you because in the end there, you may have only gotten one chore to add here to, to your chart. Okay, and remember that you need two, and you can't use the two that I've already given you as your answers for what you submit today. So um, I'm going to go back and just have you re-listen to one of her pages here to look for another chore. Think. <coughs> the next section is time to feed the animals. 100 years ago, animals ate cut-up turnips, potatoes, beets, and other root vegetables in the winter after the hay was gone. Did you know alfalfa is one of the most nutritious crops that animals eat? It also is the oldest known plant used for animals to eat. Oh. This says, now, today animals such as cows and sheep eat silage in the winter. This is a type of food made from grass crops, like corn. To make silage, you need to harvest the crops. Let's see how this has changed over time. I like that the boy and the girl in this story help us. All right, so hopefully that rereading there helped you to come up with another chore. All right, going back into our slides. So this is, um, the next part of the video is going to uh, explain to you your two options for turning in your assignment today. It's going to direct you on how to get into this slide that you see on your screen right now and type in your answers for two other chores that farmers do on a farm. Or if you've been doing this with me through the video and you rather just finish your sentences here and upload a picture, totally fine. And the next part of the video will also show you how to do that. 
before uh, we go into the next part of the video, the how to access these things. There are two words throughout this book that I was hearing quite often. And if you've been keeping up with your sight words at home and you have your own word wall, I'd like you to add these words. I actually found some post-its today in a drawer. I didn't think I had any more left. So I'm going to write two words. The first word is then. Okay, and then I'll add these to my word wall. Okay, then. And also now. So those words were repeated throughout the book to show what farming looked like then and what farming looks like now. So those are two words, good sight words that we could add to our word wall. Okay? So the next part of the video is going to show you how to access um, the Google Slides if you haven't found them already. And remember, you also have the option of taking a picture and uploading this uh, to the assignment. Do not hit turn in or mark as done. Whatever you upload will stay there. Um, you will not hit turn in until the end of the week once you've done all of your assignments. Okay, so this is um, how to, to get to the slide where you need to enter your answers. So you would go to our classroom, click on classwork, and scroll down to find shared reading and phonics, get in farming then and now, and then you'll click on activity two, shared. Okay? Um, and you'll go to slide six. So slide six is where you're going to enter your answers, and it looks like this. So what do farmers do on a farm? You would enter your sentences. If you don't want to do it that way and you did the um, video along with me and drew your own picture, just like I did, and you'd rather just upload that, then that is also an option. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to go into Mrs. Chapman's classroom because it's like I'm a student in Mrs. Chapman's classroom so that I can see the same thing you're seeing. Um, because in my classroom, I'm the teacher, so I don't see things the, the way you see them. So let's say I wanted to upload um, a photo. I would go in and view the assignment over here where it says add or create. So I'm going to add, and if you add file, okay, and if you go through upload, that's going to take things right from your desktop. So the photo does need to be saved to your desktop. I suggest emailing it to yourself. Um, and then you can download it right to your desktop. Um, and then, let's see. Okay, so like, let's say I'm gonna upload my picture for that I use for my um, Google Classroom. I would hit open, upload. Okay, my picture is uploading, that's my work. Okay, and then I can just let that sit there because I am not going to hit turn in until the end of the week once I've uploaded all of my work. This will automatically save for you. Okay, you don't have to do anything. The only way it'll go away is if you hit the X. Okay, and then at the end of the week is when you would hit Mark is done. So those are your two options. Either go to the assignment, which is right here, Activity 2, go to Slide 6 and enter your answers, or if you've already done the work through the video with me on paper, just take a picture and upload it um, for me. All right, thank you.